Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is going to be another in my series of buying low-grade comics uh, that are major blue-chip comics uh, as an investment. So what I'm doing in these videos is really looking at can you use low-grade comics as an investment tool? And what I want to kind of get into is looking at them not as a long-term investment, but as a short-term investment in this video. And the reason I say I want to look at it from the short-term investment is, can you basically buy and flip these comics, these low-grade ones, and make a money money on it? It's almost like day trading, but for comics. <laughs> so uh, not quite that quick, but um, you know, something where you hold maybe for a few months and then flip it when the time is right. And the comic that I'm going to talk about right now is really one of those kind of opportunities to flip and make that quick buck. And this is a really good example of how you can do that. So this is a low grade journey into mystery number 85. And you can see it's like a 2-0, very low grade. Silver Age comic, uh, first appearance of Loki. There's more to it. I'll read it later. But uh, this one is really mangled, uh, just so you know. It looks actually better on the screen than it really is in real life. So <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't present that well in real life. Uh, there's a lot of scuffing down here. There's like, uh, if you look at the back, it's like all stained in through here. It's, it is really rough. It's a low grade. And you, know, you, you get what you expect for, with low grades. Um, so, but the thing is, it's a cool comic to have. It's like the first appearance of Loki. Loki's been featured in multiple movies. Uh, he's a cool character. And he's one of those kind of bad guys, good guys. I don't know what he is. <laughs> you know, it's like one of those kind of funny characters that people love to hate. You know, it's just a cool character. Um, he's the trickster. What can you say? So, um, you know, it's a, it's a cool comic to own. And a lot of people get excited to own such a comic. Now, this is a comic that we're looking at from a, a short-term perspective. Even from a long-term perspective, this is a good comic because it's, it's one of those kind of cool characters that people are going to love today and tomorrow and into the future. But the reason I'm looking at it from the short-term perspective is that there's a TV series coming out, the Loki TV series on Disney+. And that will create some, some buzz to get his first appearance because people, they want to get a piece of that uh, history, right? So this is his first appearance. They're going to want to pick up this book. And it's a hot book as a result. Now, I picked this up last year. And I didn't pick it up because of the TV spec or anything like that. I just like the character. So I have a tendency of buying characters that I just like. <laughs> so... I didn't buy it for the speculation of it. I, you know, I wanted something in my collection. So um, with that being said, let's take a look at the numbers. How much does this book have at, in it? And is there a real potential for this book to flip? Like, so you can basically buy in now, sell three months down the road. When the show comes out, when it's the full hype on the show is, you know, at its peak, sell, right? So that's what you want to look at. So let's take a look at the numbers. So we'll go over to Go Collect and we'll look at Journey into Mystery number 85. It's the first appearance of Loki, first appearance of Hemdal, it's the first appearance of Asgard, and first cameo appearance of Odin, first appearance of Baldur. So lots of cool characters, even Asgard, which is a cool place, you know, these are kind of major components to the whole mythology of Thor. So pretty major. It's also, I think, the third appearance of Thor as well. So it's kind of a major Thor book in its own right. Now, if you look at the high grade, there's so even though it, it says fair market value is 270,000, well, there's none on the census. Nobody has that one. Um, the even the high next highest grade there's four of them but there hasn't been any recent sales so if this number uh let's say somebody brings out a nine six 
puts it up on Heritage or whatever, well, probably what's going to happen is it's going to cause a spike within the whole marketplace because there just hasn't been a sale for so long. And that means that when somebody does list it, when it does come up for sale, you're getting that realization of what really is that price for that book. And generally, you get a sort of a trickle-down uh, phenomena where people will be like, oh, wow, it sold for 300000 or some crazy number that, you know, when these auctions go on. And people will be like, okay, <laughs> if, if, if a 9.6 sells for 3000 well, I should really sell mine for a lot more than I am. And you'll get that trickle down as you get through the grades. But let's look at this low grade. This is a 2.0, the one that I have. Last sale was in December for 700. I bought mine in early part of last year, so for 500. And um, that's with shipping and everything, actually. So mine was around 500. And um, so even, even in that one year period, uh, I have a $200 return on my investment. So I invested 500 bucks, got, I, I could sell it now for 700. And probably if you go to eBay, you'd even see higher prices for it. So uh, there is that um, it there is that hotness of this book right now because people are speculating on it. They're really excited about the show. There, there's that momentum that's building within the market. And you can see even the lowest grades, like a 0.5, sold for 650. So let's look at how these numbers are really changing over time. So we'll dive a little deeper. You'll see that the high grade kind of went down a little bit. Um, but the low grades, look at, look at the performance rates of these low grades. 159%, 86%, 25%, 39%, really high you know, increases in the prices. Because people just want to get into the book. They just want to be able to buy that book before it's too late, before the you know, before it becomes too pricey where they can't afford it. So these low grade ones, they're, people are just clamoring for because they just want to be able to get something, get a little piece of that history before the show comes out and it's just too expensive that they can never afford it. So that's the kind of FOMO that's happening right now for this book. So right now is like kind of a good time to sell. But I actually believe that once um, the show actually drops the because Disney the way that they're doing these shows and we saw this with WandaVision is they're doing as they're doing them as episodic which means that they're they're releasing one per week it's you know building up over time and what happens is week over week you're going to get you know um, <laughs> bigger and bigger sales because people are getting more and more into it and they're getting excited about the, the whole series. They're going to be speculating more. They're going to be wanting these books a little bit more. And so what I recommend, if you, if you really want to kind of squeeze the money out of this book, what you do is you, you know, if it's, let's say there's eight in the series, eight, you know, different um, shows in the series. I'm not sure how many there are, but uh, on the seventh, that's when you sell. Because you want to have enough time to sell before that last episode comes out. And the, it, then people start to wane and they're thinking about that other show that might comes out after it. So you want to get it just before that. You want to get it at that peak where people are kind of thinking about the next show. Not, not thinking about the next show, but they're thinking about that finale. They're all hyped about that finale. And they're still willing to pay big, big dollars to get a piece of history. So that's really the goal with all this, that you want to find that sweet spot. And I think it's like sort of the, maybe the last, second last show or the third last show in that time frame. you list it and see if you can get that top premium dollar for your book. And if you have a low grade, you're, it's, it's a lot easier to sell a low grade than it is a high grade. A lot more people have uh, $1,000 worth of cash or $2,000 worth of cash to be putting into a book than $20,000 worth of cash to put into a book. So you can sort of, you know, win on the fact that there's, it's a little easier to sell. So looking at these books from that short-term perspective, 
you got to think, okay, this is only looking at it from that short-term perspective. How can we really gauge the market? How do we buy it at the right time and sell it at the right time? So generally what you want to do is you want to buy well, be like when you even hear, before you even hear a rumor, you want to have actually bought that book. <laughs> so, you know, once that rumor gets out and it's like, you know, the, 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 the book's already spiking. I mean, there's still buying opportunities there, but it's going to be spiking, you know, during that time. Uh, you want to buy it when it's a bit cool. So um, when I bought it, I bought it beginning of last year. It, the movie um, featuring Loki um, was kind of over, you know, the, the whole end game thing. He looked like a dead character. He looked like he wasn't going to go anywhere. And it was uh, Infinity War, actually. So if you look Infinity War, they look like the character's dead. He's not going to go anywhere. Nothing going to happen. Good time to buy. Really good time to buy. Because people are kind of speccing, oh, this character's, he's nothing. He's not going to go anywhere. He has no legs to him. But then Endgame comes out and it creates that possibility that he's still alive and there's new hype about him. And, you know, there's potential that this character is going to go somewhere. And then a few months later, Disney announces that it's going to have a Loki show. Again, those are like, you know, it's going to create that hype and that buzz. So you want to kind of buy it when it's at that low, where people kind of think, oh, maybe the character is dead, that there's no, there's no new things coming out about that character, and there's that low. That's the best time to buy. So you buy then, and uh, you sell during the hype, during the excitement, maybe a trailer drops, or you know, you're in one of these episodic uh, you know, seasons, and you you release you you let go of the book right before the very end of that uh, series, so that's kind of the, the the way to kind of play the the short game of comics that you're just trying to make money. You're just trying to flip it, get get to the next sale. And the cool thing about comics <laughs> is they 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 do have that kind of uptrend and downtrend. So what you can do is if you really love the character, you can. You can play that game where uh, you buy and sell it, and then you can buy it again during another lull. So you don't have to miss out on having that cool comic in your collection because you can buy it when you wait for that lull to happen again and you buy it again. So, you know, it's there's always opportunities within comics to buy and sell. So this has been a different take of uh, looking at... Um, at looking at uh, low-grade comics as an investment because I'm looking at it from that short-term investor's standpoint. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos. They each give a little different uh, philosophy in terms of how to invest in comics. And I hope that they're interesting and useful to you. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.